Now, it's time for the hermit. <laughs> Ghost stories. Weird stories. And murders, too. <laughs> the hermit knows of them all. Turn out your legs. Turn them out. Ah. Have you heard the story? It happened on Sunday. Eh? Hmm? Then listen while the hermit tells you the story. <laughs> yes? Your cousin, Viola Strait, is here to see you, Mr. Strait. Viola, swell. Send her right in. Yes, Mr. Strait. It's a coincidence. Just about to call her. Hello, Vi. Hello, dear. Here, take this chair. Most comfortable one in the office. You know, I was just saying to myself, this is a coincidence. I was just going to call you. Were you? Yes. Raymond just called me about 20 minutes ago. He did? Yeah. Well, this is more of a coincidence than you thought, because I came up to talk about Ray. Well, what do you know about that? I just had to talk with someone. And of course, Dave, you were the logical person. He's your closest friend. You introduced us a year ago. Which should give me the right to be best man at your wedding, don't you think? If there is any wedding. Hmm? Oh, Dave, there's something terribly wrong with Raymond these last three weeks. He isn't the same person. Why, haven't I told you before? When he gets one of these painting streaks of his, he isn't like other people. He always goes out to his studio cottage and refuses to see any of his friends. I know those moods, but this is different. In what way? I don't know where to begin to tell you. I've been so upset. It's so... so baffling. It all started three weeks ago. Monday night, Ray and I were having dinner at Meadow Lane Inn. You know that place, about four miles from his cottage? Oh, sure. Well, we'd driven out to the cottage in the afternoon. Ray was going to pick up some canvases he had out there. The housekeeper... Mrs. Orion, you mean? Yes. Well, she and her husband hadn't expected Ray to call that day, and they were house cleaning. Mm Mm-hmm. So I didn't go into the living room. I stood in the hallway, and I heard Ray tell Mrs. Orion to burn that big oil painting he made of his wife just a few months before she died. You heard him tell her to burn it? Yes. He said it upset him so every time he came out and looked at it. He didn't mention it when we got in the car and drove to the inn. Then, while we were eating, he scarcely spoke to me. So while we were having our coffee, I decided to break the fire. I overheard what you said to your housekeeper while we were at the cottage. I wasn't supposed to, I know. What are you referring to, Vi? About burning that lovely painting. Oh, I see. You weren't going to do it because of me. Because you thought it might annoy me? No. Then why destroy it, Ray? I think it's best. Marion belongs to a dead past. You can't kill memory. No, that's true. Ray, I don't know how to say this exactly, but perhaps you shouldn't marry me in August. Maybe you aren't ready to marry anyone yet. After all, it'll only be three years this month. I know how much you mourned, how much you loved her... Why, let's not talk about it anymore. Our plans are all made. Believe me, it's best for you to forget all that you heard me say to Mrs. Orion. Please, let's not mention it again. Naturally, I said nothing more. But from that night, Raymond seemed to change. Evenings when we've gone out, he's silent, almost morose. He doesn't seem to be aware that I'm in his presence. Then, Monday of this week, he called to say he was going out to the cottage but he didn't say when he would see me again. He didn't invite me to drive out there. It was almost as if he was saying goodbye for good. Hmm, that's strange. You say he just called you? Yes. Did he have anything to say about, well, about him and me? No, he didn't, Vi. But he was very upset. He asked me how busy I was, and then he said, Dave, you've got to come out here no matter how busy you are. I want you to come out and stay the rest of the week. What can be the matter? I don't know. Isn't like Ray, I'll admit. Are you going out? Uh Uh-huh. Tomorrow. Told him I had some work that I couldn't leave until tomorrow afternoon. Oh. I'll tell you what. Tomorrow's Friday. You can drive out Saturday afternoon. Oh, but Dave, if he doesn't want me to be... Oh, nonsense. You come out. I won't tell him. We'll rig up a surprise party. Whatever is eating him, you'll get it off his chest Friday night. By the time you get there, he'll be straightened around. I hope so. Will you come? Yes, if you think it's all right. I don't have to tell you how much I think of Ray. I'll do anything to help him. 
And although it would break my heart if he decides it's best for him not to marry me, I'll respect his wishes. Forget that, Angle. He loved Marion very much, didn't he? None of us saw anything of her or Ray while she lived, but I suppose he did. You know it. He never left her side. He allowed her to stay in the cottage while he painted. They were inseparable companions for seven years. You can't forget anything like that in three. No. Why did I have to meet him? Why did I have to fall in love with him? Why you're creating unnecessary mountains. Now, I don't know what's wrong, but I know it isn't anything to fret about. So stop worrying and come out Saturday afternoon ready to have a good time. You'll see. Everything will be straightened out. Well, Mrs. Orion, it's nice to see you again. I'm glad to see you, Mr. Street. Now, where is this guy who dragged me away from a busy office on Friday afternoon? Hmm? He's up in the studio. He said to tell you when you came to come right up there. Fine. I thought when he called me yesterday that he might be ill. Oh, no, Mr. Street. It's not any physical illness he's got. It's something mental. Sir... Just exactly what do you mean? I I can't say any more. I shouldn't have said what I have. But if you're his friend, Mr. Strait, you'll urge him to get away from the cottage this weekend. Well, how... Now, please don't ask me any questions, Mr. Strait. I can't say another thing. And don't mention to him what I have said. No. No, of course not. Just remember, Mr. Putnam isn't himself, not at all. And he needs you. He needs your help and friendship. He has both, Mrs. Orion. You know how I feel about him. At times, it seems like he's my son. I've taken care of him ever since his parents died all these years since. I know how you feel. And yet I'm just his housekeeper. I have to remember that. Now, uh, shall I take you up to the studio? No, thanks. I'll burst in and surprise him. See you later, Mrs. Orion. Believe me, I'm looking forward to one of your good dinners. Gosh, I thought from the urgency of your invitation that you wanted me to come out and pose for a painting. (laughs) I've often wondered why you never saw anything worthwhile in this mug of mine. (laughs) Yeah, what's wrong, Ray? Just no go? There's nothing wrong. I invited you down because you haven't visited me for a long time. That's all. Okay, Ray. Been doing some work? No. It's a doggone shame that you came into so much money you don't have to paint for a livelihood. You've done some mighty fine things. Now, listen, you can't walk the floor this way and still insist there's nothing wrong. Well, why keep it all to yourself? Why not get it off your chest? You invited me down here for a purpose. Look, we've been friends for years. I'm the logical person for you to confide in. Now, come on, stop walking this room like a lion in a cage. Listen to me. Is it Vi? Have you found you don't care for her? No. Is it something about your health? No. Well, then, it can't be anything very serious. If you're my friend, don't ask me any more questions. If you want to know why I invited you down here, it's because I don't want to be alone. I want you here. Your wish is granted. Now, what do you say we have a stroll around the grounds, and then urge Mrs. Orion to serve dinner early, hmm? Come start. Dave, we can't leave the studio. You've got to eat here with me. We'll sleep here tonight. You see, I've had Mrs. Orion bring two cots in here. You've got to stay right here in this room with me. Hmm? Now, wait. Don't ask me why. Just give in to this whim of mine or whatever you want to call it. You have me baffled, I'll admit. Maybe someday I can explain. If I ever do, then remember this episode is between you and me. Never to be mentioned to anyone else. Now, let's settle down. Twelve o'clock. Guess I'll roll up in my bunk, Ray. You ought to do the same. Go ahead if you're sleeping. I am. Wish I could persuade you to have a game of golf with me in the morning. I will in a few days. Well, what's wrong with tomorrow? You heard what I said. I'm not leaving the studio until Sunday morning. So that's that. Well, I'll be talking to you in the morning. It's a doggone shame to sleep on an old cot like this when this house is filled with good beds. 
You turned out to be a heck of a host. Yeah. Good night. Good night. laughing as if they were right outside the windows of the studio. No one can get in these windows. They're all locked. Hey, what is this? As if anyone would put up a fireman's ladder to try to climb in this third floor studio. You don't know what you're talking about. Well, I hope you do. Maybe you're expecting someone to drop in through the skylight. Listen. Did you hear me? Well, sure, someone at the door. Well, get on my robe before you let them in. No one here. You heard the knocking on the door, but you see there's no one here. Mrs. Orion was right. What she told me is true. She came back last year at the same time and the year before. She won't rest in her grave. Mrs. Orion was right. She does come back. Now, this business has to be cleared up once and for all. Okay, Mrs. Orion, you sit here in this chair. Thank you, Mr. Street. Pete, supposing you sit here. Sure. Hate to get you two good folks out of your beds at one o'clock in the morning, but I want this crazy business cleared up. My wife and I don't mind, Mr. Street. Oh, we don't mind at all. Anything we can do to help Mr. Putnam. There's nothing anyone can do. I want the whole of this story. Now, Mrs. Orion, Ray tells me that for the past two years since Miriam died, that you people think she has walked about in this house each year on the eve of the night she died. Oh, yes, Mr. Street. Pete and I heard the walking up in the studio. We heard something, all right. Got up to investigate, but we didn't see anybody. Of course you didn't. You know that there's no possibility of such a thing being true. Mrs. Orion, just this afternoon you told me how much you thought of Ray. Well, if that's so, why in thunder would you tell him such yarns? He made me tell him I didn't want to. I tried to convince myself there wasn't anything to it. But we did hear walking up in the studio, and we heard her laughing just like she used to do. Mr. Putnam, you made me listen on the night last year and the year before and report to him. Ray, what made you think Miriam's spirit would come back to haunt this house? Because she said she would, just before she died. Well, of all that... Now, come on. Suppose you tell me the whole of this wild tale, hmm? You might as well know it all, Mrs. Oye. Well, that's what I say. I was a coward. I stayed away from the cottage last year and the year before at this time. These days are the anniversary of her death. I was afraid of a threat. I... Well, go on, Ray. No one but Pete and Mrs. Orion knew what Marion was like. She was insane, Dave. But I never let anyone know it. I never let her out of my sight. What I'm saying is true, isn't it, Mrs. Orion? Oh, the poor boy put up with more than anyone will ever know. She used to stand here in the studio when I'd be painting and laugh just as she did tonight. Creep up behind me as I work. <laughs> what? <laughs> Miriam, you frightened me. Sure. You're always afraid of me. Afraid that I will kill you. Miriam, where'd you get that knife? Out of the kitchen. Mrs. Ori had never saw me take it. <laughs> Give it to me, Mary. I'm going to kill you with it. Just like I'm going to slash your picture to threads right now. Mary, don't. Mary, wait. <laughs> Your horrible old pictures. No one wants to buy them. None of them are any good. <laughs> None of them are any good. Why don't you paint me? You paint everything and everybody but me. You don't paint me because you want to spite me. I know it. I had intended to paint her for a long time. I tried to. But she wouldn't sit for me. And when she did, it was always to annoy me. She'd sit and grimace, laugh. I should have put her in an institution, but I couldn't bear the thought of that. She was beautiful, frail. I was afraid of the treatment they might give her. So I kept her near me all the time. Mrs. Orion and Pete were frightened. 
but they stayed on for my sake. Finally, I decided to paint Miriam even though she wouldn't sit for me. This seemed to mollify her somewhat. Oh, she was much easier to handle those last few months. Almost friendly-like. That was because she was growing weaker, though we didn't know it. You see, I had never called in a doctor for fear he would judge her insane. And then that last night, as Mrs. Orion and I stood by her bed, she raised up, looked at me wildly. I'll come back every year at this same time. Do you understand what I say? I'll come back every year until I have my revenge. We heard what she said, Mr. Street. But I told Mr. Putnam not to worry over it, none. She was always saying crazy things. I did forget it for a little time after she was gone. But two years ago, and then last year, as the time of the anniversary of her death drew near, her threat bothered me. I wouldn't come near the studio. Pete and Mrs. Orion watched for me. They heard her. And then this year I realized that I couldn't marry Vi until I was sure in my own mind. Until I'd stayed here myself. And then tonight. Tonight I did hear her laugh. It was as distinct as if she were alive. So there's only one thing to do. Tomorrow at midnight if I hear a knock at this door. Even though I see no one, I'll use my revolver. I'll fire at her unseen spirit standing at the door of this studio. she return again? Will she make a threat come true? Eh? The hermit will tell you before the night is done. <laughs> now the hermit again. <laughs> it is nearing the hour of midnight. Again, Ray Putnam and his friends sit in the studio. This time, both are alert, listening for any sound they may hear. <laughs> Miss Orion left us some sandwiches and coffee, Rain. Want to join me in a snack? No. Well, I'm going to have coffee, or I may fall asleep on you. Stays piping hot in this thermos jug. Good cup of coffee is just what you need. No, nothing. You know, it's a strange thing to me how you can be taken in by all this nonsense. You aren't going to hear anything tonight or any night. You forget that I did last night. Oh, you listened so hard last night you had to hear anything your mind created. Didn't you hear someone knock? You had me believing almost anything. I feel so darn silly. As if we were playing a game of cops and robbers. You sitting here with that gun. Both of us waiting for a spirit to make an appearance. Here I was planning on having a swell weekend... I told Vi to come out today, but with things as they are, I decided it was best to call her and tell her not to come. Better have some of this coffee. Dave. Yeah. Look at that rocking chair. The one Miriam always sat in. It's moving. See it? Rocking back and forth. Well, what's funny about that? I've seen chairs rock by themselves lots of times. A uh, uh, wind catches them. Miriam sitting in that chair. I see her. She's sitting in the rocker. Oh, get a hold of yourself. There isn't anyone there. <laughs> Stop that laughing. I'll end that insane laughter of yours forever. Wait. You're the one who's insane. There's no one sitting in that chair. Oh, you frightened the wits out of the Orient. They're coming up the stairs. Hey, 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 it's us. It's us, Ripley. Are you all right? Coming. I'll let you in. Get away from me. You can't touch me. Why, it's all with imagination. Fire the rocker. Thought she was sitting in it. Mr. Putnam, what's the matter? What's wrong? She's got her hands around my throat. There ain't anyone in here but us, Mr. Putnam. Her hands around my throat. Stop. 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 
I'll confess. I, I poisoned you. I had to kill you. But you might have harmed innocent people. It was best to kill you or that. But oh, stop. Mr. Strange, Let me breathe. Uh, Ray. Ray, there's no one in this room. <laughs> Miriam didn't return. Ray. What's the matter with him? Call a doctor, Mrs. Orrin. I'm afraid he's dying. Get a doctor here immediately. Why, it's a terrible thing. There's really nothing any of us can say to comfort you. He... he poisoned Miriam. Yes, he told us just before he died. You don't think she really did come back to carry out her threat of revenge? I saw no one. I think Ray died of a guilty conscience. But of course, it's true that there were finger marks on his throat, as if someone had choked him. And that is the part that is hard to figure out. Similarity to persons, places, or occurrences is purely accidental. 